estimated 400 women served as soldiers during the American Civil War, following husbands, fathers, brothers, and their own patriotic sentiments. In donning their uniforms, they succeeded in passing as men to the extent that they were often found out only when they were killed, injured, or gave birth. Likewise, the Civil War provided trans men with an opportunity to be recognized as men. Today, most reenacting groups welcome the participation of trans and women soldiers. The 26th Pennsylvania College Guard reenacting group from Gettysburg College has a long history of women reenactors. My name is Miriam, and I am the current secretary of the PCG. Today, I will be sharing some tips and tricks for all of my fellow ladies in uniform. We'll begin by discussing the different layers of the uniform. This is the base layer composed of a shirt and a pair of drawers. Historically, these garments were worn closest to the body with nothing underneath. If you don't have drawers, a pair of men's long underwear also works. Some warm socks are also a must for any reenactor. Personally, I keep my socks up by cinching the bottoms of my drawers around the tops of the socks. Bring a few pairs of socks to your event so you can double them up for warmth at night and so that you'll have a warm, dry pair to change into if your socks get wet. Next up are some wool trousers in sky blue for our Union uniform. These have a button fly and are held up by suspenders. Historically, these sat at the natural waist, which is where your body naturally bends. Brogans were square-toed shoes made entirely of leather. You'll need to know your men's shoe size for brogans. Some have metal on the bottoms, for example, heel plates like you see on mine, or hobnails. We complete our basic uniform with a wool fatigue blouse, which has four buttons. Since wool is a natural fiber, your fatigue blouse and trousers will provide slightly better ventilation than you'd expect in warmer weather. Wool becomes especially helpful in cooler weather, though, since it insulates regardless of whether it's wet or dry. The wool greatcoat is a versatile layer for keeping warm at night or at cooler events. As you can see, the cape can be buttoned shut or pulled over the head for extra warmth and to keep dry. To recap, the basic uniform begins with a reproduction shirt. Depending on your personal comfort level and needs, you can wear a supportive sports bra, double up on sports bras, or invest in a chest binder for under your shirt. Keep in mind that safety comes first and binding can be dangerous when done improperly. Personally, I have invested in a chest binder since a well-made, properly fitted binder is the safest method. Mine has a front zipper so I can unzip it overnight during events where we camp out. Next come drawers or men's long underwear for warmth and to protect your legs from the wool trousers since they can get a bit itchy. Remember to bring a few pairs of socks. Then we have our trousers and finally the fatigue blouse. Now I'm going to be very frank for a moment in hopes of saving everyone some time and trouble. At my first event, I quickly realized that it was neither quick nor easy to remove all of my gear when I needed to use the restroom. Your suspenders can't come down until your fatigue blouse is off, and you can't remove your fatigue blouse until you've taken off your leathers, and your leathers are easier to remove if you take off your hat. If you don't mind that process, go for it. However, I personally recommend investing in a female urinary device, or FUD, that is easy to wash and small to carry around. And with that, you've got your uniform. Next, let's talk about hair. I have a fair amount of it, but if your hair is above shoulder length, feel free to simply leave it down or pull it back into a low ponytail if you prefer. The first method I'm showing for longer hair also begins with a low ponytail. Once you have that secured, twist your hair into a low bun. Feel free to use a few bobby pins to make your bun more durable and keep it closer to your head. This is the simplest method for long hair, but it's also pretty noticeable under your hat. Here I'm showing the standard forage cap. Next, this is a hardy hat, which we've also used before at some events in the past. And finally, this is what that hairstyle looks like under my own civilian purchase hat. This next hairstyle is much more involved, but it's my go-to for a reason. Visually, this hairstyle produces the best effect out of any I've come across. As you can see, I'll start by really brushing out any bumps in my hair as I work my hair into a ponytail on the very top of my head. The fewer bumps you have to start, the smoother the finished hairstyle will look. Once that hair is in a nice high ponytail, I'm going to braid it. Then, my goal is to pin that braid as flat to the top of my head as I can. Once I feel like I have enough bobby pins in there, it's time for hairspray and lots of it. I'm using a soft bristle comb to smooth my hair up and flat against my head once I've sprayed it. If you don't have a soft bristle comb, a soft bristle brush or even a regular comb should work. 
I apply at least two coats of Stronghold hairspray, and I actually take my hairspray and comb to events with me to reapply as needed. It's more difficult and less comfortable, but as you can see, this hairstyle looks pretty convincing under each of our hats. Now on to the final step in my process, which is makeup. Feel free to go without makeup if you choose, but personally, I use some simple contouring to make my features look more masculine. I started with some sunscreen as a primer, and now I'll go in with some dark brown makeup to contour. I'm using powder and a brush, but anything you have on hand will work as long as it doesn't contain any shimmer. I start by accentuating my cheekbones, then dragging the powder down to make a wider shape for my face. Then I darken my upper lip, add some shade under my jawline, and apply just a bit of shadow under my brow bones. The element that really pulls the look together for me is my eyebrows. I start by brushing all of my eyebrow hairs straight up to achieve that initial volume, then I strategically brush some of the hairs down to thicken up my brows before I go in with any product. Instead of a pencil, I prefer a brow pen since I find that it looks most natural for me. Just make sure it matches the natural shade of your brows and you'll be good. Here you can see the difference that this makes before I go ahead and fill in my other eyebrow. I also bring makeup with me to events for reapplication, especially before photos. Now go forth and use this advice in any way you please. I hope you found this information helpful for your next event.